Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Lisa Crookshank, and I am the First Nation Métis Inuit Social Studies Consultant for Edmonton Catholic Schools. And to begin with, like every one of you have done, I'd like to respectfully acknowledge that we are on Treaty 7 territory, and thank you for welcoming us as we're from Treaty 6 traditional territory. And I just wanted to acknowledge my team of lead teachers uh, that all came with me today. Uh, last night and I just want to thank them uh, they've done an amazing job this year and we have a whole representation from elementary junior high high school and even some administrators so thank you all for for being here <laughs> <It's a battle. laughs> and then Karen you can come and join me <laughs> just kidding okay that was it no. <laughs> so like three seconds of fame or something to get. <laughs> All right, so um, as I was saying, we're from Edmonton Catholic, and I guess uh, we service 89 schools. We have about 40,000 students. We have 3,700 staff. And out of those uh, 40,894 students, we have 3,278 uh, self-identified uh, First Nation Métis Inuit students. Our department was established in 2001, and I joined our department in November of uh, 2014. So being new, um, I taught in our district for about 15 years and had just recently discovered um, the last two years that um, I actually had um, a Métis birth name. So I was adopted and then I kind of went finding my roots. And so I think, you know, things are meant to be sometimes where you're on your journey. So just very happy to be where I am today and, you know, meeting all these wonderful people. And as uh, a lot of people said before, that, you know, it all starts with building relationships. So of course I met um, Charlene, or Charlene. <laughs> I met Solange last May, and it was at the Jasper Palisades, where I also met Barb Schmidt. And that's kind of where uh, I first heard about the professional learning project. I know it had been two years in the like going on so far, but when I uh, started again in the fall, I remembered, and thanks to, I think it's Sandy from Grand Yellowhead that put that First Nation Métis Inuit Teacher Camp on, and I remember certain things from that session, and one of those things was the project. So I contacted Solange in the fall, and we joined. And the other lady there is Charlene Bearhead, who also has been one of my mentors this year, and coached me through, you know, um, focusing on reconciliation, as she's the national lead for the truth and reconciliation and education. It just has been a year of lots of new learning and it is very difficult uh, to put you know everything in 30 minutes so throughout my year and a half I've been there I've taken a lot of pictures so I thought oh great this will be a good opportunity to show all my pictures and so one of the biggest shifts I think in align with one of our district's initiatives called transform which transform focuses on uh, a pedagogical shift and so in our department I would say in the last year and a half, we really focusing from crafts to curriculum. Educating the educator has been a huge focus this year. And again, building capacity. And it was just recently that we noticed that this photo is actually used um, in our principal meetings uh, header in their agenda. And we weren't even really aware of that. So it was kind of a win for us um, as the lady who did that, you know, really thought that that was important to acknowledge. So, I'm bad at clicking and talking at the same time. So basically, those are some of the initiatives. We also had a big shift in, um, with the literacy focus this year. And we kind of coined the phrase uh, from our traditional um, support instructors where they would kind of focus on uh, beating. Now we're focusing on reading. So that's kind of our, our new shift, our coined phrase. So in alignment with the project, that's also how I organize my project. So learning to be, um, how does what you do relate to who you are? And so when I first met Solange, uh, we talked about that this is kind of like the policy section. And so we were really happy to find this um, 
piece from the, where is this from? This is from over to Ed, and it's really just saying again that, you know, all students need to be uh, taught about our history in Canada, and not just the First Nation, Métis, Inuit uh, students. That also aligns with goal four, uh, desired outcome four from Alberta Ed, and that's the call to uh, include more education when it comes to residential schools and treaties, which again aligns with the Truth and Reconciliation Commission and the calls to action, which aligns with our district growth plan. So they all connect together, and, uh, and part of our district growth plan involves two pieces. One focuses mostly on our one of our models, which is our grad coach program, which we have at three of our high schools and three junior highs for transitioning and uh, for successful high school completion. And then again, also to provide um, the professional learning to our, to our teachers. So that brings us to learning to know. So how does knowing relate to understanding? And it wasn't really until I met with Solange, probably by the third time that I really understood this concept of you know, we all know things, we all know the dates, and traditionally, you know, our teachers, they know that because they have to teach it. But the shift that we're trying to make is also, you know, taking that knowing to understanding and creating that, that empathetic view for all our students. So in the fall, we had invited ourselves to our learning coach meeting. So every school in our district has a learning coach. There was 89 people at that meeting and we just kind of said, can we come and, you know, um, put a call out there and request that we have a lead teacher at every site. So that hadn't been done before. And so um, after we did that, we were happy uh, at our first lead teacher meeting in October that we had about 38 um, come out um, compared to eight from the year before. So we thought that was a, a thing to celebrate. There they are, collaborating. I take lots of pictures. <laughs> so also learning to go from knowing to understanding is, and I'm sure you've heard about the blanket exercise. And so that was one of the things Kairos had come out to train some of our high school students last year for the youth conference that um, Melissa was talking about. And so some of our leadership students at the high school level have been trained in that. Our staff has also been trained. And so we also, focus on going out to schools and training the staff at the school sites. And so one thing we wanted to do was to honor our traditional Treaty 6 territory by using the Cree um, medicine wheel colors in the blankets. And that's just a picture of uh, an elementary school, grade five. So we found that the blanket exercise really speaks to the grade five program of studies, grade six for justice and injustice and pretty much every outcome for the grade seven social studies. So those are the three grades, you know, without we focus on high school, any grade it would fit into. So here's uh, when we went to Mother Margaret Mary, we also had some of our other consultants join us that day, the religion consultant and the social studies consultant. And is, has, has anyone um, here not ever experienced the blanket exercise? So a few, okay. So we find that that's probably the most powerful um, experience to shift your, your focus from just knowing to understanding. It's very powerful. So our district traditionally has, in the past would always do Aboriginal Day. And I think a lot of schools are used to calling upon our department for that. And so this year we kind of revisited that. We thought, you know what, it shouldn't just be a day. And it shouldn't just be a day of you know, dancing and crafts, it needs to go beyond that. And so we're shifting now. Some of the schools in our district, they will have their faith days or body, mind and spirit days. And so when we get called upon to do that, um, now our focus is definitely on reconciliation. So it's a way to kind of bring that piece into the schools. And that's where we've had a lot of help from uh, Charlene. So that brings us to learning to do. And the, the big question is, how does empowering different, differ from delegating? So I think sometimes when, you know, especially that now that all these things are coming down with the TQS and, you know, the 
uh, the documents from Alberta Ed, you know, teachers are, are like, okay, well, we have to do this. We have to, now we have to teach about residential schools. We have to teach about treaties. And I would say 90% of our educators in our district don't really don't know how to do that. So we decided that, well, we need to be able to reach all of you and do that. So some kind of, um, another thing that had never really been done in our department, we have about 15 staff in total, but eight of those staff are out at school sites and they make up the Rated Journeys grad coach model. Um, and so we decided this year as consultants that we would hold a session for our whole department staff and just really get them to look at the program of study so when their students come to them for help and support and for tutoring, they know what the connections are and we actually spent the day and they had to kind of highlight through whatever grade level they work with, uh, which outcomes potentially can they speak to um, their students when it comes to residential schools and treaties and there's about 33% of the social studies outcomes that can speak to that. We also decided uh, when we were planning uh, that we would have our monthly PDs that have the social studies and the literacy focus. So here's some of our teachers engaging with Guta. She's our Inuit resource person. And she also, from that PD, got some bookings to go to some of our schools. So there she is at St. Augustine. And she brings the traditional food as well so that students can try it. And then some, uh, I was also inspired by are my colleagues and friends at Edmonton Public and I thought you know what can we do so we can make this easier for our teachers so what we did is we also started creating um, more edu kits there were some that we had but I thought we could make more so now we have two Inuit kits that teachers can borrow and when I first asked about their kits I forget I don't know who the lady is that um, does your kits at Edmonton Public, but she told me that the Inu kit is booked for two years ahead of time, and I was like, yeah, right, you know. Well, it is, because <laughs> when I put this out to our teachers, of course, the, I'm like, whoever wants a kit, let me know. Well, I got about 42 emails back in about 10 minutes that they all wanted it, so, um, so now I believe her. <laughs> all right, and so we have a storytelling PD, we also involve our elders to come out um, and provide some knowledge and their perspective on the topics we're presenting, so el our elders are always welcome. So we also try to make um, the setup for our PDs culturally, culturally appropriate, so and we see a semicircle there. Um, we also had our Métis PD, um, which also there was a fur trade kit available as well. So, um, yeah, so I'm not going to name all the PDs, but we basically held one a month, and then either our lead teachers uh, would come or they would recommend it to whatever grade level it was appropriate for, uh, for the teachers to come at their schools. And so in March, uh, we, uh, the one Jeremy was talking about, we went out to the Jasper Palisades, and it was, I brought about, I think it was 13 grade 7 teachers from Edmonton Catholic to also look at the, the project for the mountain people. And very, they were very grateful that they were also uh, be, to be able to, to be part of that experience. So part of our learning to do in the pedagogical shift for our cultural support instructors kind of went through a big shift this year. So they have, I think, Karen Aranda, how long have you been? Yes, average on ten since the beginning. So they've been there since the beginning, and. So I think they were ready for a change too. So we were um, given some money through a grant and that allowed us to pay for training for um, Karen and Rhonda. So they experienced training like daily five, uh, level literacy intervention through Fountains of Pinal, I forget which other school district mentioned that, uh, Jolly Phonics, front loading, reading strategies, lots, lots of different PD. And so we were also able to purchase a lot of our um, leveled reading resources so that actually align with the Fountas and Pinnell benchmarks. Our district also uses the benchmarks for Fountas and Pinnell, uh, but we thought we really need to hook our First Nation Métis Inuit students because there was a bit of a gap when it came to literacy. So we purchased lots of different resources like Eagle Crest and I can't remember them all, I'm not the literacy consultant, but we got quite a few, oh, Turtle Island Voices, there was lots of different um, leveled readers. So then that was uh, 
a hook for our kids in that they would be able to recognize language and the things that um, they hear in their communities and in their homes and relate it to their reading. So that was um, a highlight for us as well. So here's some data from one of the schools that uh, Rhonda, our other instructor, so from November, she started, I think everyone started in about October with their reading groups. So from November to March, every student, I left their names out, uh, went up three levels in, in their reading level. So in that school, she goes twice a week and has six different groups, I think 15 students all together. And then Karen, uh, she'll, she'll speak to some of the things she's done as well. So we have about seven or eight schools, with, uh, especially schools with high numbers, that we provide literacy support to um, in like the north, east, south, and west of our district. So that brings us to learning to relate. Um, how does where we learn influence how we learn? So I wanted to put this picture because I thought it was pretty cool that uh, that's going up. Has anyone not, not seen that one before or heard about this? It's been in the news, so I'll just put that there. So for our own staff, learning to relate really speaks to community. And in the fall, uh, Gary, our cultural advisor, Gary Gagnon, organized a staff PD for us out at our elder Bob Cardinal's place in Enoch. And so um, I just put pictures up of Enoch because I didn't have any from that day. <laughs> but we spent the whole day with Bob and he really focused on um, how we can learn from the land and how it's so important to stay connected to the land and, you know, how how we can reach our, our First Nation Métis and Inuit students and some really important connections. So that was a day um, I'll never forget. We also have a Council of Elders and their role is to meet with our Board of Trustees. So there's some decision-making at that level. They have their monthly meetings and the lady on the right is my supervisor in the yellow, Shirley McIntyre, and the lady on the left, Rhonda Metallic. She's the one, uh, similar to, I forget the elder that was talking about the Cochrane, how they organize their elders. Uh, she organizes, so if schools request, um, you know, an elder to come speak, she'll organize that and provide them with the proper protocols as well. Um, this is just a picture of Francis Alexis. He's one of our elders, and this is him at one of our schools speaking on sky science and mathematics. So he did a teaching with his students, and it was, it was a beautiful time. We also focus on our family nights as well, so connecting family with community. I think a couple of, a couple of our schools have had two or three family nights throughout the year, so we, we help them with that. We also, Gary has done an amazing job reaching out to our district staff, so basically anybody is welcome to, he put on a, a P, P professional learning session where it bridged our Aboriginal spirituality with our Catholic faith, and it was four sessions, and so he started with, uh, you know, just what, what the importance of ceremony, what it is, the traditional medicines, the protocols, and then the last session was on a Saturday where we all went out to uh, his friend, Rocky Morin, on Enoch, uh, for a traditional sweat ceremony. So Rocky was gracious enough to let us use his own family's traditional sweat lodge, and I did ask him for permission to take pictures of that day and then it was just a beautiful day so everybody who signed up for the first session of that PD stayed with us um, until the end so that was that was really cool and again you know people you know educational assistance um, there was our, our elementary religion consultant that joined us that day so it was pretty cool so now I'm at the point where I'm going to invite Karen up and uh, she's going to speak to something really beautiful that she uh, organized this year. Thank you, Lisa. I have a few notes here. When Lisa invited me to come down, I had said no. <laughs> I kind of think of myself as being more of the background person, and uh, I like to just go and work with the kids, and I enjoy that thoroughly. 
So I was thinking as I was sitting there that sometimes when you're really nervous like that, it's good to tell a joke. And uh, <laughs> I didn't tell Lisa this, but I'm going to try it out anyway. Uh, uh, my mother worked for the superintendent of St. Albert School, Catholic School District for many, many years, and he had shared this joke with her, so I think it's okay for me to share this joke with you. It was about a guy, and he was, um, didn't want to get up and go to school one morning, and his mom was knocking on the door, and she was saying, you have to get up, it's time, you have to go to school. And he said, I don't want to go to school today. And she knocked on the bedroom door again, and she said, you have to get up, it's time, you have to go to school. And he says, Mom, I don't, I don't want to go to school, the kids don't like me. She said, you get up and go to school, you have to go, you're the principal. <laughs> so anyhow, I thought that was kind of a funny joke. Um, my name is Karen Gagno, and I had the privilege this year of working with our FNMI students who are struggling below grade level with their reading. Uh, we received a literacy grant, as Lisa had mentioned, and so uh, my, myself and my colleague Rhonda Paul, we, we received some training and we went into these schools to work with our kids. And I was assigned a West End school close to Enoch uh, Nation, St. Benedict, and um, I was meeting with my kids and um, one day one of the students said to me, he said, you know, Miss Gagnon, would it be okay if we went out to Enoch and read with our elders? And I thought, you know, that's, a, that's awesome. That's a wonderful idea. So um, I got in touch with someone who could uh, get me in touch with the Elders Lodge. And when I called them, I initially thought that uh, it was a six-month program. Perhaps we could come out at the end of the six months and we could show them our, uh, what we had learned in our reading program. When I did speak to someone there, they said, you know, why wait till the end of the program? Can you bring them out for Christmas? We would like to meet them. We want to know who they are and we want to know how they're doing. We want to support them as best as we can. So uh, we were able to arrange it and uh, we ended up inviting, I always tease the principal, I said we ended up inviting everybody and their cat and dog because we ended up having a fairly big group. We invited parents and aunties and uncles and grandparents and uh, the Elders Lodge, their job was to invite the elders in, from the community. So we, um, we loaded up the bus, kind of like the Beverly Hills, and we even, we even packed up the principal and we brought him with us too. And we went out and we had the most amazing time. And uh, the kids, uh, we demonstrated the reading that we normally would do on a, when I would meet with them. And uh, they actually used the microphone and they got up and they, um, we met all the elders, we made them a gift, uh, and unbeknownst to me, they had invited the chief. However, the chief was in Ottawa at the time, so he sent someone in his place, and it was really inspiring for the staff and the students, for everyone. Um, it was uh, Councillor John Thomas, I believe was his name, from Enoch Nation, and he spoke to the children in Cree, and, um, and then went on to say to them that what they were doing was so important that this reading is a life skill and that it will take you anywhere you want to go and that we look to you youth to be the future. You're our leaders down the road. And uh, you know, a hundred years ago, we used to hunt buffalo and that's how we survive. But education is our buffalo and we've heard that term so often. But you know, it just touched the kids and it touched all of us. And the elders went on to say that we're here to support you and we're, we want you to do well and we're going, we're going to pray for you. And you know, it was just such a success and we came back and the kids said, when are we going back? When are we going back? So we have arranged it. We're gonna go back on June 3rd for our wrap up. I contacted the Elder Center again and they're very excited, looking forward to us returning. And you know, the kids feel a real sense of belonging. They feel a sense of it being a, a place that's safe for them to take risks, for them to feel supported and encouraged. Um, I feel I have the best job in the world. Well, what I have to do is just be there for them and hold that space for them and give them my best every day. And uh, we just came up with a name for our program and uh, we're gonna call ourselves Read, Lead, and Succeed. Thank you.
All right, so uh, just a couple more things under learning to relate. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, Wanda, she's our new community relations person, met with Mufti Matheson. She is an Edmonton photographer that's taken on the initiative of the Red Dress Project. Okay, is that five seconds or five minutes? Five minutes, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so um, one of our high schools, Archbishop Oscar Romero, um, hosted these um, beautiful uh, photographs and the leadership students there did a project um, and bringing awareness to the students and staff at that school about the missing and murdered um, Aboriginal women. And so um, it was a, we went for the session that Mufti held and spoke to and it's on Facebook you can follow it and they're really encouraging like anybody to join that and to to add to their photos one of our one of the last things that we've done is um, we have a program called Our Lady of Grace and it's kind of it's held at Cardinal Collins which is one of our uh, alternative ed schools or fresh start sites and so we support our students that um, have had children in their teen years and help the moms to finish. And so every May there's a baptism for all their children, which is right uh, across the street from our site. So I work at the Sacred Heart Learning Center and Sacred Heart Church um, honors all the children. They go through their baptism. And this picture, these are the pictures I wanted to show because it shows Elise Wood, who's holding her son, um, Fisher, and he was actually named after one of our um, district chaplains who passed away last year, and they were best friends with him, so they gave him their baby, uh, Father Catfish's name, and then she is the grad coach at Oscar Romero High School, and then she asked one of our uh, curriculum support instructors, Rhonda Paul, to be the godmother, so that, I thought that was a beautiful thing. Uh, the one thing that's coming up this Saturday is our uh, annual Ben Cafro powwow. That we, it's 35 years uh, this year that we've had it, and it, I've heard it's grown. It used to be held at the school, and now it's at the Commonwealth Stadium. So it's really grown, and so everybody, you're all welcome to come. And I'm pretty sure there might be some people. Um, I met these. Um, this man on the left, he was from Masquiches, uh last year, and I asked. I was just it was my first time I went to a powwow, so I was pretty, I thought it was really amazing, and so I asked to take pictures of people's regalia. Uh, the two guys on the left, they're from Kisiko Oasis, which is our Mountain Creek camp that Edmonton Catholic Schools has adopted out in Rob, Alberta. Uh, so we help and take care of that school with them. And then, I think that's almost it. That's the powwow again, and I always feel like I'm missing something. There was something I was going to talk about. And I think actually Jeremy and Melissa touched on it just um, when I kind of go throughout the year, our reconciliation week that's coming up in partnership with Edmonton Catholic Schools in the city of Edmonton. So that's something we'll be working closely with our schools on. So I would just like to say thank you. And I hope you enjoyed um, our journey in sharing and First Nation Métis and Education. Thank you. <laughs>